One of the very important functions of a DJ mixer is its ability to allow you to listen to a record before you play it out to the crowd. So we've already heard that you would use this cue function or pre-listen function to beat match. Uh, you get your working record in time with the live record before you then blend them together. In live you could also use the cue function to transpose the working record so that it's actually in key with your live record. So cueing in live opens up some interesting possibilities creatively. So in order to queue up or pre-listen to a track before you play it out to a crowd when DJing with live, what you're going to need is a multiple output audio interface. So you're going to need an audio interface with at least four outputs. One stereo pair or two outputs for the live record that you're playing out to the crowd, and one stereo pair or, or two outputs to allow you to queue or pre-listen to your working record. So a lot of audio interfaces on the market actually have a dedicated headphone output separate from the outputs on the back of the interface. I'm just going to expose the input-output routing section. You see that currently both my tracks, the audio output of these tracks, are going to the master out. So the master out is one and two. I've selected my Motu Ultralight audio output device here. So that is going to be the live record, output 1 and 2. What we need to do is select a different output for the queue so that we can listen to the working record before we play it out live to the crowd. So on my Motu, outputs 13 and 14 are the dedicated headphone output, so I'm going to select that. Now you'll notice here that now this button becomes activated and we can actually choose whether these line of buttons here are solo buttons or Q buttons. So I'm going to select Q and you'll notice that the S turns to a little headphone icon. Now if I launch this track and press the Q button, you can now hear it in my headphones. I can set the cue level using this part here. But currently, even though the cue button is on, because the track faders up, the crowd are also going to be able to hear that track. So you've got a couple of options here. We just turn the track activator button off can now only hear it in my headphones. Alternatively, you pull the track fader down, leave the activator button on, I can still hear the track in my headphones. However, if you're trying to match the levels of your working track with your live track, you probably want to use this option where you've got the activator button off, the cue button on, so you can see what the levels of each track are doing. Remember you can resize the fader section here, give you a bit more of a detailed scale. However, when you're playing out live, the last thing you want to do is forget to turn that activator button off by mistake or something like that. So, a nice little workaround would be to have an extra track. I'm just going to rename this one Q. And in this particular track, what I'm going to do is have the activator button off and the Q button on permanently. What we're going to do, whenever we want to queue up a track, just listen to what it sounds like before we play it out. Just drop it into the queue track. We're always just going to be able to hear this in our headphones. The crowd's not going to hear this. You can check levels, that sort of thing. If you want, 
transpose it so you're mixing in key with the live record. When you're ready to play that track out, just drag it back into the appropriate deck and then we can fade that in. Or obviously use the crossfader. And that way we never have to mess around with the activator button and the cue buttons here. Not going to get confused. We've got a permanent cue track. When any tracks in the cue track, the crowd aren't going to hear it. You can listen to it in your headphones. Just drag it back onto the appropriate deck like that when you want to play it out. In addition to listening to the working record in your cue output in your headphones, sometimes you also want to listen to the live record in your headphones. Obviously, this method currently only allows you to listen to what's going on in the cue track, which is one clip at a time, which in this case is this tune. I want to be able to listen to this one as well in my headphones. So how do we do that? We can use Live's routing, and I'm just going to rename the second return track Q as well. Then in the input output routing, I've also routed this Q track to my headphone output. So now this main Q track is going to my headphones, and this return track is going to my headphones. All I have to do to listen to the live record in my headphones now is turn up send B. I can now hear the Q track and the live record. What we can do as well is, for example, pan the live record over to the left hand side so we can separate out the live record and the working record in our headphones. So that's just a little workaround if you want to hear not only the working record but the live record in your headphones simultaneously. So that's queuing using Live's controls. <laughs>